Welcome to ATCM, the Emergency Medicine Channel. Today we will discuss about anaphylaxis. Anaphylaxis is a life-threatening condition caused by systemic allergic reaction to some external agents. Anaphylactic response in a patient who is sensitized to the uh, allergen appears within minutes, within seconds after administration of a specific agent like a drug or uh, some external allergen and it suddenly produces severe breathing difficulty and circulatory collapse like hypotension, tachycardia, shock, all these things. Skin manifestation you can see in many patients, they can have pruritus, itching, uh, some allergic uh, reaction all over the skin, angioedema can be there in some patients. These are the routine skin reactions what we see. Some patients can have severe gastrointestinal manifestations like nausea, vomiting, abdominal cramps and diarrhea. We will see what are the causes for anaphylaxis. The commonest cause for anaphylaxis is antibiotics or any drugs. The most common antibiotics are penicillins and beta-lactam antibiotics. NSAIDs can present with a severe anaphylaxis reaction. An anesthetic agents can present with severe anaphylaxis. Many food items like peanuts, shellfish, other fishes, egg, milk, soya, all these things can present with anaphylaxis. Insect bites, like insect stings like bee sting, wasp uh, uh, sting, all these things can present with anaphylaxis. The most common cause for anaphylaxis in, in practice uh, is drug or uh, food items. Now we'll see what are the clinical features of anaphylaxis. Most of the patients will have mild clinical features like itching can be there, some articarial rashes over the skin can be there, lips can have angioedema, lips can uh, swollen up, conjunctival ingestion, redness can be there in some patients, flushing all over the body, severe sweating can be there, severe wheezing can be there in some patients with bronch bronchoconstriction, gastrointestinal uh, pro problems like uh, uh, severe diarrhea, vomiting, all these things can be there, hypotension can be there in some patients, shock may be seen in some patients. Some patients develop severe uh, altered behavior and loss of consciousness that may be secondary to shock or CNS involvement. CNS involvement as such is very, very rare. Severe hypoxemia or shock can lead to altered behavior. Laryngeal edema or laryngeal obstruction is one of the major problem you see in many patients with uh, uh, articaria or anaphylaxis. Uh, patient can have strider on examination. Strider means it is something like V's patient have uh, V's on both inspiration and expiration because of the upper airway obstruction. Now once the patient have anaphylaxis or articaria, early articaria, the patient should be taken in, inside the emergency room. You have to always take care of his airway, breathing, circulation. Talk to the patient. If the patient is not having any respiratory difficulty, he'll talk without any issue. Uh, airway protection should be done because uh, many patients can have severe laryngeal edema. That type of patients, you may have to intervene and intubate uh, at, uh, whenever it's uh, required. Otherwise, a normal patient who is having hypoxemia because of minimal uh, anaphylaxis, you have to uh, give supplemental oxygen. Some patients may require large amount of oxygen, 8 to 10 liters may be required in some patients. And every patient who is having anaphylaxis, you should uh, uh, maintain an uh, IV line. So initially, when the patient enters to emergency room, take care of his airway, breathing, look for saturation. Put two IV lines in this patient because any time this patient can collapse. So always try to uh, get an intravenous access. So put two large bore IV lines. And immediately, you give antihistamines. You can give CPM, chlorpheniramine malate, 10 to 20 milligram IV should be given, or diphenhydramine can be given, 50 to 100 mg can be given initially. Uh, and many patients, uh, to prevent secondary attack, you have to give corticosteroids. Hydrocortisone can be given, 200 milligram. Midalprednisolone can be given, 120 milligram. Or you can even give dexamethasone, 8 milligram IV can be given. So, take care of his airway breathing, circulation, so put two IV lines, start giving injection antihistamines, give steroids. The steroids will not act immediately, but it will prevent further attacks. If the patient develops any major problem, like patient is having uh, hypotension, shock, 
then you'll have to go for definitive treatment of anaphylaxis that is adrenaline if the patient develops shock always try to keep the patient in supine and uh, try for a trendelenburg position so that initially patient can have a improve in the systemic circulation but that is a, only a transient procedure you uh, you keep the patient in uh, supine position and start adrenaline normally when you have uh, adrenaline in your emergency room normally it is one uh, one is to thousand uh, uh, composition you can give it as uh, im or subcutaneous injection More preferred route is uh, injection adrenaline uh, im is a uh, preferred route you can give 0.3 to 0.5 ml uh, one in thousand solution uh, can be given immediately after once you diagnose uh, anaphylaxis it can be repeated after five minutes interval if the patient does not improve okay and you can gently massage the area where you are given adrenaline because it facilitates the absorption adrenaline can also be given through nebulizer in a patient who is having some laryngeal uh, edema or uh, swelling uh, Suppose somebody is having breathing difficulty, because of anaphylaxis, you can even try adrenaline nebulization. So, adrenaline injection is the best uh, way of treating anaphylaxis. IM route is a preferred route. You give 0.3 to 0.5 ml, 1 in 1000 solution, you can repeat it after 5 minutes. Suppose the patient does not improve immediately after your uh, adrenaline injection. You can you have to give a uh, infusion protocol. For that, you uh, take one in ten thousand uh, dilution. So, if you take ten ml sa uh, saline and dilute one in thousand, it will become one in ten thousand. Then you infuse. Uh, you can give 0.5 ml of adrenaline as IV first dose. If the patient does not improve in your initial IM dose, uh, dilute in ten ml. In that, you take 0.5 ml and give IV bolus. If the patient does not improve even after that, then you will have to go for an infusion protocol. You take this 1 in 10,000 uh, uh, dilution and 1 microgram per uh, minute you can give infusion. Uh, up to 10 microgram you can give in a minute. So, uh, you can give IM injection uh, initially. Uh, that is 1 in 1,000 microgram, 0.3 ml, 0.5 ml, uh, 2.5 ml you can give IM. If the patient does not improve, dilute it in 10 ml saline and 0.5 ml take uh, 0.5 ml from that and give uh, iv bolus or you can even give infusion if the patient does not improve okay so what we have discussed is uh, somebody come with anaphylaxis due to any cause it can be drug it can be uh, food items it can be some other allergen take the patient inside emergency room always take care is airway breathing circulation talk to the patient look for saturation Look for laryngeal edema, you look at the oral cavity, whether any obstruction is there, breathing difficulty is there, auscultate for V's. Many patients with uh, anaphylaxis can have minimal breathlessness initially. If you miss that, patient may go to complete shock. Look for systemic circulation, look for BP. And always try to give, uh, try to maintain IV lines uh, whenever the patient enters the emergency room because any time patient can arrest in front of you so try to maintain two large bore IV, IV cannulation if the patient go to anaphylactic shock then only you have to give adrenaline as IM or IV or IV infusion thank you subscribe to ATCM emergency medicine on YouTube press the bell icon to follow us